hurt, maybe. <laughs> Never a dull moment in college dodgeball. Guess we have a moment for a word from one of our sponsors, Ben Subcheck. Go. Whoa. <laughs> Today's sponsor is Tuck's Burger and Fries. In the mood for a burger? Tuck it. Back to live action. Did you, did you practice that? No. <laughs> All right. Looks like the JMU game is finished over there. I'll be interested to hear how that one went. That would have been a big upset, according to Jazzy. Uh, it was Bowling Green State University versus JMU. JMU, one of the heavily favored teams, so we'll see how that one turned out. Back to Western Saginaw action here. A little bit better on the runoff there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Number 37 for Western with two immediate kills, two amazing dot three kills. Wow. With a handful of amazing dodges as well. That was unbelievable. Again, Western starting out their games so strong. Every point they've had so far, they've had a very dominant start to the game. Oh, me and my big mouth, I guess. And Saginaw answering with two very quick back-to-back -back kills. Oh, diving catch there for Saginaw. Now, another thing that I'm noticing, and you know, maybe it's strategy, maybe it's, again, just lack of communication, the number of Western players that seemed like they're just kind of trapped on the back line. There's a lot of players for Western I don't see even coming off the baseline. Why, why do you think that is, Ben? Uh, they're scared. They're not very good throwers. Um, they're unwilling to put their body on the line. Well, but see, they're not putting their body on the line. If you are, it, yeah, if you are not a confident thrower, then you're a blocker, you're a catcher. Uh, for your, I've seen quite a few of the players on the back line make some good catches. They need to be forward, um, work to get those catches, or worst case scenario, be a human shield for one of your team's power players. I mean, every time a WKU player has a ball, it's a thrower. There aren't, I've not seen one person that it was a dedicated blocker like it was has been in the past. See, again, powerful counterattack. Saginaw Valley, oh, Saginaw Valley being up on that line. Western making probably at least half of their throws from behind their own free throw line. Uh, and, I mean, we've said it once, we'll say it again. You are not going to win a game of dodgeball off catches alone. It's not possible. You're not going to do it. Well, this is turning into a massacre of a point. No, I mean, one thing you have to take into account here um, for both teams, at, at this point, Saginaw is confidently going to win this game. Western is obviously not going to be able to pull out a win here. Um, it, at this point, you maybe – this is when it's okay to start playing a more version – a more passive version of dodgeball, excuse me. Because at this point, you're just putting more stress on your arm – you're running the risk of having an injury. So once you're confidently going, or you're pretty for certain going to win or lose, it does make sense to maybe play a little bit more passive of a game. Especially in a two-day tournament like this, uh, your arm is gone that second day. Uh, I don't care how good of an arm that you have, how strong you think you are, it, it's going to be hurting the next day. So this, this makes sense to me, too. Yeah, if, if, if I were in the situation Western's in right now, as a captain, I would say, okay, look, let's, let's get some blocking practice in on this round. Let's get some catching practice in on this round. Start working on some tactics. Because, again, I pointed it out during that first point. Saginaw has some very solid tactics that they're using. Their pushes are great. Their defensive screens are great. Western doesn't have anything like that. Now is the time to start practicing that in a, turn, in a tournament environment. Thankfully, no shot clock violations from Western during this second half. <laughs> well, two in the first 20 minutes and then zero since then. So that's, they've, they've cleared that up. <laughs> oh, a doozy of a headshot there on Saginaw Valley. He's walking it off, though. Insult to injury. I'm just going to hand to him. That's not a happy gentleman there, Ben. No. <laughs> that's not a happy gentleman. Ooh, sliding catch. Over there, Saginaw Valley number 18 had a nice sliding catch. Uh, knee pads definitely paying off. Oh! Oh, 
<laughs> that same number 18 blocked a Western throw in one of his own teammate's genitals. <laughs> oh, boy. Again, goes to your previous point, there is no safe place to be uh, on a dodgeball court. That makes it so much more interesting. It really does. Here's the counter. Again, much stronger than anything WKU has done. Um, this is the first point of this game that Western did not have a commanding lead at the beginning. Uh, and again, I think it's because now they seem pretty well locked into that passive game play. And I don't blame them at this point in the game. Six minutes left, six minutes 30. Yeah. I believe the referee did call. They were just going to roll the clock. The clock isn't going to stop. Uh, we're just going to continue to clock in for the rest of the match. Uh, similar to the mercy rule in baseball or something. I don't know. Well, yeah, just keep it going. It's over. Western with that patented slow jog up and not even getting the half not even reaching half court for making their throws. Oh, got number 12 out over there. That's nice. About the, the, the counter attack is so much more um, effective if you're running at them until they don't know what to do and they toss their block ball, their ball that they're blocking with. I wholeheartedly agree. If you were to go back and watch all of these points for Western, I would say there's probably less than five players that we've seen run from yeah. Western. It's kind of a slow lope up to the front and then a very cautious run back to the back line or a very cautious kind of backwards jog to the back line. I'm not seeing any, and I hate to say this because it's cliche, but I'm not seeing any hustle from Western. And and the counterattack also forces Saginaw Valley to rethink like getting all the way up to their throwing line. It makes them go, okay, WKU is going to absolutely run at us. Even if we have a blocker, it doesn't matter. They're going to run at us and be aggressive. It's going to intimidate them, and they're not doing this. So Saginaw's like, we'll and just stay up at the front. Agreed. And speaking of intimidation, look at where Saginaw is on the court right now. Uh, they've got the ball advantage, they've got the man advantage, and I'd be surprised if they pull back behind their own free throw line here. Of course, while I say that, they all, well, see, they didn't pull back behind it. They stayed in front of that free throw line. Because at this point, they can afford to lose a handful of their guys to some desperate catch attempts. Um, I don't know how he didn't manage to block that. Yeah, that was... Two right. balls in your hand. Sometimes when you have two balls in your hand that you, uh, and that just doesn't sound good, but nope, finish the clock, <laughs> uh, you, you get distracted by both of them, and it's much more difficult to block. If you have one ball in your hand and you, you just block with that, it's actually a little bit easier. All right, and that is point number five for Saginaw. We've got four minutes, 21 seconds left in this game, so that's going to be a chance for uh, them to get a last couple of minutes of kind of some practice, uh, hone things out, and then we'll, we'll see where they go for the next game. Oh, wait, nope, I think we're calling it, actually. Oh, there, okay. We are indeed calling it. All right, so thank you very much for joining us. This has been the first game for both uh, Western and Saginaw, so we'll see where these two player, where these two teams go, pardon me, for the rest of the tournament. Saginaw Valley, obviously one of the favorites like they are every year. Uh, Western, like we said, not had a great record this year. But uh, Saginaw is not, is not a, you know, that's not a team that losing to is going to be that debilitating. They've got to be able to pick up the pace, though, for the rest of these games. Josh, we're wrapping it up here. Anything to say before we uh, tune out? Did Sac Valley take a point there at the end? They did indeed, yes. All right, well, hopefully WKU will, like Swanee said, take away the positives, catching, work.